the old steakhouse, <laughs> which is uh, was squirreled away in our B rig back line and. All right. The first show we did in Tel Aviv. Oh yeah, that's the one. Yeah, so he's, the one. he took it with him. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, it's too good to pass. Yeah. On. Okay. Yeah, it was tuned down to D standard because it was the uh, the guitar for Endless Sacrifice. Right. But they changed the set list, and we're not doing that now. So. He's so that like, was sitting there, and he just like oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm he's, he's like he's like, what guitars do we have in the B rig? And you know, the B rig hasn't been home in over a year. Yeah. So it's it's just been floating around. All right. Um, we got here. This is the 20th anniversary. Majesty. Yeah, that's beautiful with the gold. Yeah. Like just just the smallest details. Yeah, just the smallest details, yeah. Does a lot. And then the uh the back plate with right. the engraving on it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, this I mean this guitar sounds great. And then so this is kind of his main right guitar for this. This is what he used on the solo tour is his main guitar. The okay. the this is the Nebula. Yeah. Um and the Nebula and the Tiger Eye sort of became the two main studio guitars. Right. So we would just leave them in the studio. And then we were gearing up for the solo tour. These just kind of had a good, they, within a three piece band, yeah. the, the full maple tops just right. sounded better. Okay. So, um, so yeah. And then he just said, oh, let's just take them on, on Dream Theater. So. Here's the the tiger right. eye. Right. So same thing. It's just it's a flame top instead of a, a quill. Okay. But it's full maple top. He's got the the maple ribbon in the neck. Right. That's gorgeous. Yeah, it is. So do you have them set up in a specific order of the set list, or Not, do you just know? I just know. So usually the way I work it is from left to right. It's standard tuning sixes. Yep. You know the. Depending on how many tunings are in the set list, yeah. right? So with this set list, it's standard tuning. Everything's just standard tuning. It's either a six or a seven. Yeah. So we ended up having four standard six string guitars. Mm -hmm. So, and we'll just rotate them around. Like the other night, he just played the Nebula all night. He's like, I just, it sounds good to me. I just want to play one guitar. It feels good. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. we'll switch it up where every couple of songs we'll switch. You okay. know, it's just, it's, it's kind of mood dependent. Uh huh. Um, and then the seven string, what we, typically what we do is we have a main and a spare of every tuning okay. or string configuration, yes. right? So like this is the main seven string. This one's been around for a while. This yep. is a, called a burnt ember or, em, oh no, ember glow, I think it's called. Yeah. Yeah. Ember glow is the, the one. Very nice. And then... Uh, the backup to that is this is one of the new colors. I'm not sure is this wisteria blossom the purple? Yeah, wisteria blossom is what this is called. And if you look close in the in the dark, you'll see the sparkle. Right. There's like a slide, really slide. faint <laughs> flake in there. Yeah, I see it right there. Yeah. Awesome. So Yeah, so we might end up actually using this tonight for one song just to just to rotate it in. The next two guitars are in D standard. It's great. They're just by uh, the way, just you've done this a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, a couple of times. Yeah. yeah, these are uh, just in D standard. They were for endless sacrifice, but yep. the set list got switched up, so we're just not using them. Okay. But I keep them in D standard just in case something changes. Yeah. You know they're there, and then this is the old, uh, the old eight string. Um, All right. And this is one of the new kind of colors. This is um, what's the new blue you color is it okalani blue uh, i think so okay well, yeah we'll need to verify that one but uh same thing it's got a little bit of flake in it yeah and uh this has got the the fan fret yeah and fixed bridge and then very you know, cool looks the same on the back can i just quickly just yeah, i want to feel that oh sure yeah feel the thickness or that's not too the, bad. The lack of thickness. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's more that. <laughs> the thinness. But it's it's really not, compared to the seven string, it's not. It's just wider. It's just a little bit wider. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Very cool. You want to go through the whole, like, signal sure, chain? Sure, sure. All right. So, uh, sure, Axiant digital wireless system. Yep. So, they, what I do is I have two guitar straps. Mm -hmm. Each one has two packs. So, channel one and channel three are the piezo outputs. Okay. Channel two and four are the magnetic outputs. 
they route into this old AB box that we've had forever and ever. And what this does is it switches both piezo and magnetic at the same time. Okay. A or B. Yeah. And then it also so has pairs. A, yeah, it also has a mute function, so I can just kill everything on the input. Um, and then from there, we go out the magnetic side. I'm sorry, the piezo side. We'll just start with that. Originally, it was going into this body res pedal mm -hmm. into a DI box out to the PA. Okay. But with this set list, we're doing some songs from Six Degrees, and one of the songs, Solitary Shell, yeah. he used to play a double neck live. So right. 12 string 12 acoustic, string. six mm -hmm. string electric. Instead of dragging that out and doing the whole thing, we ended up making a um, effects chain in the Axe Effects for the piezo. Mm -hmm to kind of just give it some color and effects and reverb right. and all that stuff. But then for a solitary shell, a pitch block kicks in and does like oh, a pseudo cool. 12 string kind oh, of cool. thing. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it kind of fills it out, gives it the essence of it. It works. Yeah, it works. So, uh, so, th so what happens is out of the AB box, then we go into one channel of the Axe FX, mm -hmm. process the piezo, and then it just goes direct out to the PA. So same thing, slightly more technology D driven digitalized. The yeah, yeah digitalized <laughs> yeah um, and then the magnetic side goes into plugs into the back of the rig yep. i've got a splitter that um one side goes out feeds a tuner out on the pedal board okay yep. so it's right off the input of the guitar perfect the other side comes in the first thing it hits is the rack wah mm -hmm. so this is so john's signature wah pedal the right. jp95 yep started life as a Dunlop rack wah. Okay. What we did is he had his settings. We took the rack wah out. I put a bunch of tape on the knobs so they wouldn't move. We shipped it to Dunlop. Okay. They traced everything out, made the pedal. And then when it came time to go touring again, I said, well, hey, can you take the guts of the pedal and just put it back in a rack chassis so I yep. can have multiple controllers and whatever. So that's what they did. So, um, so basically like if this was a, a traditional rack wah, there'd be a bunch of EQ knobs and stuff here. Yeah. What they did, that's all fixed and right. You know, so that's not, that's not something that's going to be available or it's available. No, no, no. But if you want, very custom. if you want his wah sound, you just get the, pedal. yeah, exactly. Well, I had the pedal. Yeah. If you open it up, there's a bunch of trim <laughs> exactly. pots on the inside, yeah. which is all the rack wah It's just wah fixed stuff. in there. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, and then out of the wah, we come up to the pedal drawer. Mm -hmm. oh, yep. So we have a uh, RJM Mini FX Gizmo, mm -hmm. uh, MIDI loop switcher, yep. uh, Voodoo Labs Pedal Power 2 Plus, you know, just call it, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, loop, so all these loops are in series. So it's just like daisy chaining okay. a bunch of pedals together, yep. right? So loop one is the compressor, which is a dark glass hyperluminal. Yep. Uh, the thing about the pedal drawer, before I go further, is this changes a lot. Right. Um, there's a couple of mainstays, like the Dreamscape is a mainstay, mm -hmm. but it kind of, it's album dependent. So okay. when we're tra when he's cutting an album and he wants to use a Dimension C or a chorus or a, some particular effect on the record, mm -hmm. it'll end up going in the pedal drawer to recreate it okay. live later on. So we use the Hyperluminal in the studio, mm -hmm. track and clean guitars. So that's in the drawer. Um, the phaser, you know, you always ends up coming back to an MXR Phase 90-ish mm -hmm. thing. Yep. Uh, we've had a bunch of different ones, and the Phase 95 is kind of cool. They sent it to us, and they're like, what do you think? And it's like, yeah, it's set up as a script logo, Phase 90, pretty much on the like the Van Halen yes, exactly. <laughs> speed. <laughs> um, loop 3 is the Sparkle Drive mod, and this is one of those things that just this can switch out almost daily okay you know mood dependent like i, I have an entire drawer full of so pedals and right. you know more overdrive pedals and things like that so okay. but this kind of happens to be the favorite at the moment um and then so as i was explaining the album dependent the boss mm -hmm. ce2 waza and the uh, DC2 Waza yep. Dimension C were used on the record. Yes. So they have very particular sounds for songs that we're doing. Absolutely. So those are here. And then the Dreamscape gets used uh, for that kind of jet flanger sound, you yep. know, the uh, what cra uh, the Cradle Will Rock, that right, right. or Unchained, you know, that, yes. that vibe. I keep referencing Van Halen, <laughs> but you know, I'm a Van Halen geek. This is like the, uh, like in Count of Tuscany. Okay. The, yep. That, that flanger section. Okay. That's, that's what this right. is doing. Right. So the Dreamscape and the Dimension C are chained together, daisy chained together in one loop. Okay. So I'll just turn one off, turn one on. Right. 
and then back. Okay. So just like that. Um, and then out of the loop switcher, we go into the mimic pedal okay. in the back. Yep. Right. So the mimic pedal is does what it does. It kind of gives you that illusion of double tracking, like a second right. guitar player. Mm -hmm. um, like the best way I've found to describe it is uh, like if you listen to a Randy Rhodes solo, yep. right, and you can hear him his double track yes like it's that type of effect yes so super cool just a small variation of the tone like yeah. just a shift yep exactly small Al shift. almost like a chorus but not quite yes yeah so then the outputs of the mimic uh go into the two amps so the, the rig is full stereo at this point yeah so the top amp is is what we would call the left amp yeah the bottom amp is the right amp okay so they each have their own independent speaker cabinet mm -hmm. and they each Ha, uh, carry signal in full stereo to the axe effects. Right. So the axe effects resides in the effects loop of both amps. Yep. So, you know, I think we're, I'm using input and output four left and right, four left in and out, four right in and out. Grab okay, so both switching. amplifiers go mainly into one axe one effect. Axe okay, okay. The gotcha. The second axe effects is just a spare. Okay. But it's connected by MIDI. Yep. So it's switching all at the same time. If yep. something were to go down, all I have to do is move a couple of cables yes. around and should be back in business. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and then, you know, obviously John's settings are mm -hmm. kind of to taste, but this is this is where we've been living currently. Does that change a lot too, like depending on yeah. venue? And, yeah. yeah, kind of venue and mood and, yeah. you know, like he'll come in and go, I was reading the manual and I, <laughs> I want to try this setting and, you know, he'll dial something up and we'll try it. And Read a manual of his own help of Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, of I'll course. tell you what, man. <laughs> I do it all the time, yeah. all the time. Um, so then, yeah, so the the speaker cabinets are over yep. here. They're Mesa traditional recto 1x12s. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they have, uh, we've been using the SE Electronic VR2 ribbon mic right. with the reflection filter. Yep. Uh, and this little... Just straight on? Just straight on. Okay. Yeah. Makes it easy. Yep. Yeah, so Jimmy T, our, our engineer, who is our touring monitor engineer, but he's also our studio engineer. Yeah, you know, he rigged this up, and you know it's what sounds. Are the microphones like nice. typically rounded off, or? Uh, you'd have to ask him. It, okay. Not 100 sure what, <laughs> yeah. what goes on yeah. once it leaves the speaker. I mean, I would imagine that you would have to roll off a bunch. Probably, yeah. But uh, we can, we can ask him. Sure, we can for sure get the uh, info. And then everything's controlled by a uh, RJM Mastermind GT. This is the GT 22 22 yep. button. They have different sizes. Um, and then the cool thing is, is like this, this actually is a great song. This is sort of his main bank of presets. He's got clean one, which yeah. is clean channel with a phaser. Okay. Clean two is clean channel with a chorus. Uh, and we've sort of emulated that 2290 chorus in the yep. axe effects. Crunch one is just straight up channel two on the amp, no effects. Uh, CR2 is that crunch channel with a chorus mm -hmm. that, you know, that kind yeah. of the big chorus thing. Then you have lead one, which is the lead channel with a long delay. Mm -hmm. Lead two, which is kind of a medium delay. It's, yep. It tucks back a little bit. Oh, so it's good a for, little bit. Yeah, yeah. You're good for unison stuff. And then uh, occasionally we'll get into, like, let me see if I can. Yeah, like this is a good one for Sleeping Giant. Like I've got a crunch with a short delay. Okay. So it's channel two with a short delay. Right. Uh, it's very specific for that song crunch with the dc2 okay yeah, that yeah. was used on the record yes um yeah, let's see if i can find some other stuff yeah so like caught in a web there's a crunch with it adds in the overdrive yep. for a little bit uh crunch with medium delay so still channel two right. so it doesn't get that that mid push and all of these extras are like if he feels like oh yeah. i want to head into shred mode yeah you could just this, you yeah. could hit that yeah gotcha. shred mode turns on um, and sometimes, you know, depending on what the song is and what's required, mm -hmm. uh, there may be more presets that you don't see visible, but yep. they're they're hiding in the background that right. get triggered uh, offsite. Okay. Um, let's see what else is a good one. Uh, well, I mean, pull me under is a standard main bank. A view from the top of the world is there's like a lead phase for one little section. Yeah. Um, Count of Tuscany, that's that crunch flanger for that jump, jump, jump yeah, yeah, section. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, you know, depending on what the set list is and what tool we're doing, I can program 
the entire set list in order and then yes. just go and say, I need these presets, or if we need to make a special preset, I can mm -hmm. construct it on the computer, upload it to the pedal board, and it's... And it basically it's just steps up for every song, or... Yeah, yeah, so like, just as I was doing, like, yep. you know, so we'd start down here at Alien. And it just goes up. Yep. Okay. Yeah, Alien, six o'clock, et cetera, et cetera. Do you, uh, but you're doing this, right? He's not doing this on stage. Or well, does he want to have so, that control still? Yeah, so he's, well, we can walk out there and look at his pedal mm -hmm. board now. So he's got the same exact setup. So he's got the same pedal board mm -hmm. and they talk to each other. Yep. Uh, and then got a uh, volume pedal which is just an expression pedal yep there's a volume block in the axe effects that does the volume control mm -hmm. uh it's got a wah controller out here for the rack wah yep. there's another one up on the riser in the back okay and then the tc tuner um out here this cable's got goofed how long have you had these now wow <laughs> uh, yeah, almost 20 them, years oh that long almost yeah. 20 at yeah, 2004. Uh, i remember Got seeing them. that how cool they were the first okay. time they showed up <laughs> like go, yeah go ahead pick one up go ahead <laughs> i'll pick them up <laughs> if you Hang can <laughs> I, I gotta give it a try sorry don't hurt yourself you sure oh, okay yeah yeah okay yeah. they're gonna stay <laughs> they're gonna what stay there we're gonna do assume the uh, position Oh. Yeah, put your foot up on okay. there. Yeah, it's so comfortable. That is good. Yeah. yeah. Really cool. Yeah, I love it. Steve Bear. What's up? What's with this crooked fucking uh, thing here? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. What'd you, what'd you do? <laughs> uh, what? Yeah. Very nice. I love this color. Oh, like minty. Yeah. It's all beat up. Some beard oil on it. <laughs> Some? <laughs> <laughs>